Jackie Onassis at 10 years old. <laughs> and I was Judy Dench at 14. <laughs> and when I was murdered by Satanists at 12. Bringing that guy back from the dead, I will never forget. Hey, and I was drowned a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I was sucked into a black hole. <laughs> but you know what my favorite memories are? Growing, Growing up, up in Navin. Hi, I'm Emma Isherwood. And I'm Sally Isherwood. And we've been in shows such as The Shipping News. Who Gets the House? Are You Afraid of the Dark? Revenge of the Land. <laughs> Strange Days at Blake Holsey High. But today, we're here to introduce Canada to our hometown, Navin. Navin, a palindrome in which the name can be read the same both backwards and forwards, was named in 1861 after the town of Navin, Ireland. Navin, Ontario today has a village population of approximately 2,000 people surrounded by a larger farming community. Like any small towns back in the early 1900s, there were many trials and tribulations shared by all resulting from the wars, the Great Depression, and the challenges that came with building a new community during difficult times. Here's lifelong resident Eric Smith. Well, my experience with the murder of Navin, I'd be the on, I'm the only living uh, witness to that. <clears throat> and it happened in the morning of uh, June 1940, and I was out in the yard with my dad working in the yard, and uh, my mother ran out and shouted, Constable Dent has been shot. So we, Dad always was look, always interested in the excitement, and uh, he uh, said, let's go. So over to the railway station, and we were the first to arrive there, and old Bill was in, in real panic. I watched Dr. Irwin open up his shirt, and you could see the, the hole here where the bullet went, but no blood. It was all internal bleeding, and that's why he died. Constable Stoneman said to my dad, can you tell me something? And Dad's well, I heard three shots. So to make a long story short, four of us carried the thug out, who's a big man. Put, threw him in the back of the hydro truck, and who had arrived. The whole community was arriving at that point, so. We ended up back in the uh, freight shed of the railway station with uh, two bodies, the thug and uh, Constable Dent, and then, of course, that's, we, 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 uh, that was my personal experience with the murder at Navin. Uh, I've been often asked the question, did it, did it, uh, did it bring the community closer together? But uh, in my opinion, it, not really in the, by the fact that there already was a closely knit community. There's a strong sense of community in Navin, and it's that sense of community that led to Hay West. The Hay West story begins one July morning in 2002, when Willard and Wyatt McWilliams heard through news reports that covered the plight of the Western farmers that there was no feed and many farmers were being forced to sell their cattle. Some were at risk of losing their farms. At the same time, farmers in the east were enjoying an abundant harvest of hay. One of the great traditions of Canada is that we help each other in time of trouble. Within four months of watching the newscast, the McWilliams father and son had spearheaded an effort that encompassed over 1,600 volunteers and hundreds of private and corporate benefactors that delivered about 60,000 large bales of donated hay to 1,000 farm families in Saskatchewan and Alberta. Navin's home to many well-known sports figures, like one of the hottest young pitchers in the majors. Baltimore's Eric Bedard. Bedard began his competitive career in 1992. He then went on to bigger and better things when he was signed with the Baltimore Orioles in 1999. And what true Canadian town wouldn't have a famous hockey figure? Or two? Or three? Claude Julien was recently hired by the New Jersey Devils as head coach. Prior to his appointment to the Devils, Julien was head coach of the Montreal Canadiens. But Claude is not the only hockey fanatic in Navin. Jeff Hunt owns one of, if not the most successful junior hockey franchise in Canada, the Ottawa 67s. Navin is the birthplace and in all cases the last resting place of the hockey legends Hector Heck Kilray, Walter Kilray, and Kenneth Kilray, uncles of current hockey celebrity Brian Kilray. The Pope Domes were brought to Navin in 1984 by helicopter. 
after Pope John Paul II conducted a Mass in front of thousands in Ottawa. Today, the domes are used during the Navin Fair as a performance area for many Canadian artists. Affectionately known as the biggest little fair in the Ottawa Valley, the success of the Navin Fair is dependent on the countless hours of hard work and dedication of many community volunteers that allows the continuation of a family and community tradition. More than 50,000 people gathered on Sunday, August 13, 1995, to watch as the 50th annual Navin Fair rumbled into the Guinness Book of World Records. Tony and Duke led the way in the 50-horse hitch. The horses and wagons stretched 168.5 feet from front to back, and more than 2,400 feet of leather were required to make the line that controlled the team. The honor of driving the hitch went to Willard McWilliams, a long-standing member of the Navin community and one of the primary organizers of the event. Will you do it again? Probably. That wasn't the only world record broken in Navin. The McCullough School of Dance was founded in 1955 by Ray McCullough. On Saturday, July 31, 2004, the McCullough School of Dance attempted to break a Guinness World Book of Records for the largest mass performance of Highland and Step Dance. Ray received official word from Guinness World Records that the dancers have successfully been entered into the record books. Okay, that's really <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have the d distinction of having bred the highest producing Holstein in Canada and she's still the reigning champion since 1999. No. Uh, Navin's a great town to live in. A lot of spirit in our town. I'm really proud to be living in this town. You probably wouldn't see many robots doing farming, except in Navin. Let's go visit Cloverhurst Farms, the home of Stanley Edwards and Sons. The cows are being milked automatically with robotic milkers and uh, they're, they're milked 24 hours a day, seven days a week. These are only a couple of our agricultural showcases, but in Navin, you'll find many family farms that have roots in the community that extend back for many, many generations. Astronaut Dr. Robert Thursk of the Canadian Space Agency lived just a few miles outside the village of Navin and made a return to visit Navin during the 2001 plowing match. Navin, with its agricultural roots, submitted and won a bid to host the 2001 International Plowing Match and Rural Expo. Just imagine, the Rivington land behind us covered with a sea of tents. This house was built in 1876 and is now one of Canada's trendiest stores. Laura's Corner. There are over 30 thriving businesses in this small town, many of them home-based and generations old. Hi, I'm John Bradley, and I own and operate JT Bradley's store here in Navin. Since 1898, the Bradley family has owned and operated the store, and we continue to serve the community of Navin. I'm standing outside the hottest shop in Canada, Chili Chili's. Trust me, it's really hot, I would know. I work here. Over the generations, Navin has also seen different school buildings. Navin Public and Continuation School, Meadowview Public School, that both Sally and I attended, and currently its new school named the Heritage Public School, opening September 2006. There are two churches in Navin, St. Mary's Anglican Church and Navin Vars United Church. In addition, there are various community service groups such as the Navin Lions Club and the Navin Community Association. Well, we hope you've enjoyed your trip through Navin and what we think is the greatest community in Canada. And as a resident from England once said, well done Navin, you're a credit to Canada. <laughs>